All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Twee, and I'm the Festival and Exhibitions Director, um, and we're here with Chloe Abrahams, who is the director of The Taste of Mango, which we all just seen. Um, Chloe couldn't join us for the in-person, but she was gracious enough to do a virtual Q&A with us. Um, and Chloe, welcome, and thank you for this incredibly raw and vulnerable story, like just welping, welcoming us into your world um, and sharing all these insights about your relationship with your, your mom and your grandma. Um, and I know that there were some heartbreaking moments, but I also witnessed a lot of joy and compassion and generosity as well. Um, and maybe before we dive deeper into that, I would love to hear a little bit more about what was your intent for making this documentary. Thank you so much for having me. And I'm so sorry I can't be there in person. Um, All good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm currently uh, in London, eight and a half months pregnant. Um, and Congrats. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So it wouldn't be a good idea for me to travel halfway across the world right now. Um, um, and also, excuse me if if I am meandering or going off in some weird direction because I'm creating a human, which is taking a lot of energy. <laughs> all good. We welcome all of it. Um, so yes, my intention for making the film... I, this I started this making this film I think it was seven years ago um it took about five years to make um so yeah six six seven years ago I, I really began the film and when I started I was so angry I had a lot of anger towards my grandma towards kind of all men in general and I um started making the film wanting to wanting I guess for lack of a better word revenge <laughs> and um I don't think I really cared that much about connection when I began it was really like I need to show people what is wrong and I need people to apologize and um so I went in with this kind of, yeah, angry intention. And slowly over the course of those five years, that anger really, I worked through it very intensely through the making of the film. And I, I kind of slowly realized that that's not what I cared about anymore. What I wanted to do was actually... Um, get closer to my mother, get closer to my grandmother and and see how we could work through these things and move through these things. And um, yeah, so I'm so glad you mentioned that it also feels joyful because it it wasn't always a joyful film. It was, it was at times, for a long time, it was uh, he like really heavy and really angry. So um, yeah. Yeah, and I definitely saw those moments too, especially in that one scene when you were speaking with your grandma and she was sharing, you know, just her reasons for not defending your mom. And I could, you know, I could tell that, you know, you were really trying to process that and, you know, keep your composure. And and in that moment, like I, I saw so much of each of your humanity coming through too, you processing what you're grandma shared and that disappointment that, you know, her response wasn't different. Um, and, you know, just, I, I guess like, you know, in, in this, in this, in the making of this, um, I wondered what, what, what were these conversations like with your mom and your grandma? How did you get them to sign on board with this? And were there any negotiations that you all had to make? Was there a process of consent that you had to go through with everyone? Yeah, I mean, so when it when I began the film, it was really only about my grandma and um, it was about trying to understand her intentions um, and really trying to get her to apologize for to my mom. And um, when I approached my grandma about it, I didn't really have a relationship with her. And so I think she was just really happy to get to spend time with me. And 
Um, I didn't know where the film was going. And I, you know, consent forms and contracts are one thing. We never signed any at the beginning. And that wasn't important to me anyway, because it, the the important thing was the relationship. And so we just had, I spoke about what I wanted it to be. Um, and we just kind of kept talking um, about, you know, as it changed. And she had very clear guidelines of what she didn't want to include. She had, yeah, which I'm not going to go into, mm. but there are things that, uh, yeah, she was very clear that she didn't want to talk about and she didn't talk about those things on camera. Um, and so she was very happy to talk openly to um, and to also just spend time with me. And with my mom, she's been wanting to to tell this story for really, really, really long time. And so when I approached her and, and said that I wanted to do this and, and as it became more about her as well, she was really on board um, and she was a lot more kind of present in the editorial process. Um, I showed her numerous cuts throughout along the way and it was, funny because at the first cut I showed her I I still took I took some time before I showed her the first cut because I wanted I knew she had never seen a rough cut of anything before and I I wanted her to think it was a real movie <laughs> <laughs> and um but when I showed it to her she had to kind of readjust in her mind what she thought it was going to be um because I think for her at the beginning, she really imagined that it would be more of a kind of an expose um, of her stepfather and and a bit more hard hitting or journalistic. And um, I once I showed her the first cut, she she was like, oh, yeah, I like it. But she, <laughs> <laughs> it was like so not journalistic. It's like I, I, it was so poetic. I thought like the aesthetic of this, your like narration, it was in such a different direction, I guess. Yeah, and so after that, once she recalibrated, she was really fully on board. And um, the kind of addition of my story at the end um, only came in the last few weeks of filming. And so, uh, not of filming, of editing. Um, so really very close to picture locking. And when I told her, she was like, oh, this makes so much sense. Now I understand why you're making this film. And uh, and she's been coming to festivals with me and, and at one of the Q and A's, um, she said that, you know, she said about me that I'm someone who kind of thinks a lot and feels a lot and she never really understood. She would, she would kind of roll her eyes at me and, and, um, after showing the film to people and and really the, the having this final film, she said that she has come to really understand who I am. Oh. And so that's it's been a really, yeah, beautiful thing to um, be able to connect more with my mother. And we like I thought we had a great relationship already, but it's um, it's helped us understand each other even more. Yeah. And I, one of my favorite things that I, I enjoyed about the film, and this is probably where, you know, I see the joyfulness and the tenderness is your relationship to your mom and just how close you all are, um, which isn't always the case with, you know, well, myself and other like, you know, first gen um, Asian Americans and diaspora folks I know. And so it's just really, really lovely to see that and to see that this kind of relationship is possible and that people do have it and it takes and it still takes work to cultivate that you know um yeah, yeah. and then with your grandma I I also you know was seeing you know the arc and the evolution of your relationship in the film as well where you know at the end you're spending more time with her and um and I just wonder if you could share a little bit more about how that has evolved maybe even beyond the film yeah, so I I wish it could have continued to evolve. So sadly, um, after we shot 
the last scene, the last moment um, on uh, the beach and she decided to leave. I, um, we had, a, we applied for her to have a visa to live in the UK with us. And unfortunately that was rejected by the home office. And um, during that time, her health rapidly deteriorated. Mm. Um, and I went to visit her. This was just before we screened the film for the first time. And um, yeah, I went to visit her. I, I showed her most of the film. Um, it didn't feel right to show her the full thing while she was so ill. Um, and yeah, sadly she passed um, just after we premiered. And yeah, so I know that during the time of making the film, we became so much closer. Um, I'm, I think I'm the only grandchild who now has that relationship, but only because I made this film. I, mm. I wouldn't have had that otherwise. And um, yeah, so it, I'm really, I'm just so grateful that I got to have that with her while it was possible. Yeah, and it's such a gift too. And thank you for sharing that with all of us as well. Um, yeah, I, I guess I just want to take a moment to also hold your grandma as well in this space because um, I know a lot of things she was saying was really difficult to hear. And I was I was feeling all that tension and anger with you and also understanding, you know, the time and place that she lived in and the circumstances and maybe who she is and how she was raised. Like, I was also feeling for her too and thinking about all of these potential futures that she was never going to be able to live. And so there's, you know, there's grief, there's a lot of grief in that, that I was feeling for her. And again, I really thought like how you portrayed her, like you just showed a lot of generosity towards her as well, as difficult as it may have been. Um, so I just wanna thank you for that also, Chloe. Thank you. Yeah, it's it's so I mean, it's so complex. Like she like you said, um, she really had very different circumstances. And I don't necessarily think it just easily washes everything away, but it can mm -hmm. help understand certain decisions. Um, and also, it's I think like her passing before she got to leave actually was also why it felt really important that we ended up putting that last moment in the film because she mentally did get to leave even if physically she couldn't. Yeah, and and I appreciate you for saying that too, that you know we can understand the circumstances of why people made decisions, but it still doesn't, you know, these actions and consequences still happened and it still hurts you know, our family and it still, you know, continues on, you know, through the generations unless we actively do something to stop it um, or break that cycle. Um, and I feel like you also did a really incredible job of holding that balance too. Um, in the few minutes that we have left, I would love to talk to you about the intimate aesthetics that you've chosen for the film. I know you mentioned earlier, your mom was expecting like a hard hitting journalist documentary but you've chosen to go in a very different route um like I said your narration was just so poetic and all the water imagery that you had the music was really beautiful um can you and, and you know there were there were so many shots that were handheld that had the home video quality can you share a little bit more about your choice for this kind of aesthetic yeah well it was kind of accidental um because I had no funding <laughs> <laughs> at the beginning that was kind of how it happened I um I was so embarrassed of this little camcorder my friend just convinced me to get it um just in case and I thought I would just record video diaries and just keep them to myself like just to kind of record the process but I also filmed some other things and um yeah it took me some time to get comfortable with the idea that that was the aesthetic of the film because I thought nobody would take me seriously um 
but soon it really became part of the visual language and the camera became this extension of me and using the zoom as a way to kind of try and get into places that um like to try and get into my mum's head or something and mm -hmm. and um and also using it would be like I would be sitting going for a walk or catching something with my eye and zooming in with the camera and like it would be like where my brain would be processing things and um and using that imagery as a way to try and allow the audience to also reflect and not to to, to as a way to not sensationalize the violence that we're discussing um and just as a way to kind of dissociate almost um yeah and with the the voiceover it went through so many different iterations um I knew that I didn't want it to be something that was kind of explaining gaps or telling the story um I take a lot of notes on my phone and I write down dreams and observations and things like that and so a lot of them came out came out of these um little notes and um <clears throat> yeah it it just it it took a lot of time uh and one of the editors I worked with um Isidore Bethel he really helped me distill everything towards the end and cut down on um a lot of the voiceover which I think just opened it up when you when you sometimes the less you say the more you actually say so <laughs> um Absolutely. yeah yeah and I thought the zooming in like as simple as it seems was actually really effective and each time that I watched the film it's even though I knew what was coming it made me feel really uncomfortable like every single time you zoomed in because like you said like I can't look away we're like entering into this very private intimate intimate space that I feel really privileged to be privy to um and and I think it really access you know it gives us this access into this you know this this world that you're building and, and these this um uh the psyche too that you're unfolding for us um so I I, I thought you did a really great job um, and uh, I do have one last question for you. You mentioned earlier that you're embarking on this new parenthood journey. We're super happy for you. And I'm sure there's a lot of complex emotions that are coming up for you too. But um, I was wondering if you could share with us, what do you hope to, as you're raising or about to become a parent, what do you hope to um, leave with this last generation? And what do you hope to carry on to the next? Yeah, wow, such a big question um it's especially as the next generation is really very close <laughs> um I think you know I when I was making this film I really had the as you can see see and hear and experience I really was thinking very seriously about parenthood and what that would mean and what I wanted to leave behind in the previous generation and I think actually a lot of my impetus for making the film was so that I could really work on things for myself before becoming a parent um and I think the journey of making this film and also going through pregnancy in a way there's a lot of similarities like it's really making me um reflect on my life, my parents' lives, and um, see them with more compassion. Um, I would love to leave behind fear, I think. I, I, that's maybe very broad, but <laughs> I don't wanna be a fearful parent um, because I think actually a lot of decisions that hurt come out of fear um and what I would like for the next generation I don't, I don't know. Uh, more compassion more <laughs> yeah I want them to feel like 
they can move through the world in the way that they want and are not having to constantly look backwards. Hmm. That's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. No, I really, I know, I, I know I like sprung that question up and, um, I appreciate you so much for considering it. And again, for taking this time with us, I think, you know, already you have shown that you're, you know, you're breaking this cycle and the way that you're showing up and moving through the world, um, is really admirable and courageous. Um, so Chloe, thank you again for all your work on this film. I know it took, I know it took a lot of you and also it's such a gift for all of us too, to witness your journey and process as an artist and creative. So thank you again. Um, and yeah, I'm sure we'll be seeing more from you soon in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you.